The Renaissance was a transformative era when anything suddenly seemed possible. But the great horrors one 16th century Hungarian countess was supposedly hiding within her castle walls raised more than a few eyebrows as well as hairs. She was accused of torturing, bleeding, and murdering hundreds of young peasants from her village, all for the sake of beauty. In a world where high standing was paramount, some would have killed for it. For centuries, the law of the blood countess has prevailed, pegging Hungarian noblewoman, Elizabeth Bathory, as one of the world's first and most prolific female serial killers in history. There have been numerous books, music collections, and films dedicated to the gory and horrific story of the blood countess herself. The titular character from Bram Stoker's Dracula has also been considered to be inspired by her supposed grisly and blood-filled lifestyle. But after 400 years, fewer and fewer historians are so sure that the legends are true. Elizabeth was born in August 1560, into the family of Bathory which owned land in the Kingdom of Hungary, in present-day Slovakia. Her father George was a high-ranking official of Transylvania, and she spent her childhood on the sprawling estate of Etchard, being cared for by the family's servants and a governess. She was very well tended to, which was ideal as she may have been epileptic and suffered what was then called, falling sickness. But she was also exposed to great cruelty and brutality at the hands of her relatives towards their staff. She was also rumoured to have given birth to a child out of wedlock at the age of 13. She would eventually marry in 1575 around the age of 14 to another nobleman, Ferenc Nardashti, who gifted her the castle of Cheda, which included a small village and farmland, located in the Little Carpathians. Meanwhile, they lived at his palatial home in Nardashti Castle. She was educated, privileged, and wealthy. For some, the attention and status were welcome and used as a positive influence, but for others, it was a means to conceal their darkest and most brutal deeds. During the long war which spanned from the 1590s to the 1600s, Elizabeth handled the affairs of her husband while he was away fighting alongside his Hungarian troops against the Ottomans. At times, she had to defend her homestead from opposing forces, and would frequently house ill and injured people from her village. The couple had four children together by the time Ferenc Nardashti died in early January 1604. During the time of his passing, Ferenc entrusted his family to his cousin, Georgi Thurzo, a very powerful Hungarian magnate. Just before her husband's death, rumors started to swirl in official courts amongst the clergy. One prevailing story was that a new governess of the household, named Anna Davulia, was thought to be a witch, and the public began to wonder if her wicked nature was starting to rub off on the countess. The accounts of her depravity varied, but there was always one criterion met. Young women, usually virgins, were tortured, beaten, eaten, and left for dead. It was also believed that at one point, blood was splattered on Elizabeth's skin. She wiped the blood away but was shocked at how youthful the skin became once the blood had been rubbed in. This gave her the idea of using their victim's blood, not only topically, but internally as well. Once they heard about the heinous stories coming from the castle, they decided to check for themselves. Was it true that Elizabeth Bathory, the beautiful and intelligent widow, was luring young women to her castle, under the guise of offering them courtly etiquette lessons, to torture, maim, and murder them on castle grounds. Thurzo was ordered by the Hungarian king to conduct an investigation around 1610. They had collected around 300 witness statements while gathering information. Some of the more sensational stories alleged that she would bathe in the blood of the virgin girls until she felt the color had returned to her aging cheeks. Bathory seemed adamant to remain youthful and beautiful, at all costs. Thorzo made an unannounced visit to Bathory's castle to arrest her and her servants just before New Year's Eve in 1609, which led to a terrifying discovery. One girl was found dead, and another was found confined within the castle. The supposed prisoner apparently wasn't questioned at all. And although Bathory often housed sick patients from the village as they were treated and healed, Thurzo made the arrest quite publicly, and would seemingly forego any assumption of innocence before her side of the story was revealed. Nonetheless, she was placed on strict house arrest in her own supposed castle of horrors. Although none of the witnesses had seen any of the alleged events with their own eyes, it was enough to convict her and four of her servants. It is believed the servants were subjected to torture to obtain a confession, and they were then executed expeditiously following their admission and subsequent convictions. The sanctioned executions themselves were just as ghastly as the crimes they were convicted for, with two having their fingers amputated with red-hot pincers and then burned at the stake. 
A younger accomplice was beheaded and then burned on the pyre as well. Another briefly avoided capture but was apprehended, and their sentence was carried out. Elizabeth, however, escaped not only the meeting with the executioner but the trial itself. Yet she was still convicted of the heinous crimes and sentenced to house arrest in her castle. It's unclear whether she was free to move about the estate, or if she was confined to only one room, but she would eventually die of natural causes in August of 1614. She was 54 years old. She was buried in the Bathory family crypt at Etched, after villagers complained when she was buried in the graveyard. Her children were stripped of their titles and essentially banished from the land. Some historians say there was plentiful evidence to indicate the claims were true, but some historians likened it to a witch hunt and political scheme to unseat the powerful Bathory family. There were no formal complaints lodged officially against the Countess, and none of the rumours were ever substantiated by an eyewitness. The number of victims officially totaled 650, but that figure was given by a questionable source amongst the castle staff. Was Elizabeth the unabashed murderess of Transylvania who killed scores of young women in a nightmarish attempt to retain her youth? Or was she the victim of a vicious conspiracy and slander, developed and nurtured by suspicious and petty villagers who were up for a good scandal and the marring of a prestigious family? We may never know for sure. Perhaps the truth, not unlike beauty itself, is in the eye of the beholder.